Does anybody else have a question? If not, then we'll call it a night, okay? Okay, Brother Max. Uh, that's just random, but like, uh, in Job 28.3, yeah. it says the stones of darkness. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing? Like, is that a reference to anything? Oh, you might catch me right there. All right, let's look at the book of Job. Can you uh, mention the passage? In... 28.3. All right, so remember, let's go by... Uh, the rule of interpretation in the Bible, and then we can see the interpretation to that. All right, so Job chapter 28, verse 3. The question is, what are the stones of darkness referring to? So Job chapter 28, verse 3. What are the stones of darkness referring to? He setteth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection, the stones of darkness and the shadow of death. Okay, so let's look at context over here. Uh, verse 1, surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. He searcheth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up, they are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread and under it is turned up as it were fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it, has doth, uh, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. Okay, now, uh, what we see over here, I think can come to two points over here at Job chapter 28, concerning about the stones of darkness. Now, I, have, I haven't the foggiest idea, so I'm just going to throw... I'm just going to throw in, like, uh, guesswork over here. So, Job chapter 28. Verse 3. It mentions about stones of darkness. This could be in parallel by context with all the other elements of our earth. You'll notice a lot of scientific statements here. That's why the book of Job is rich where a lot of creationists like to use the book of Job to prove scientific facts in the Bible. So in Job chapter 28, notice that different minerals are mentioned. You notice that verse 1 and verse 2? So then verse 3, what could be possibly referring to is it could be following the context of the earth's minerals. So at verse 3, it could be referring to stones of darkness to like dark stones, so to speak, or dark minerals because it was referring to all kinds of different stones previously, iron, gold, silver, etc., etc. Notice that also the same context, verse 3, is searcheth out what? Perfection, right? Yeah, so notice right here, that's what you do with minerals and rocks, right? So to find like these uh, rich minerals is that by digging out through the sometimes dark stones or these different stones, and then you can hit something precious inside. So it could be referring to that. So that can make a lot of sense. However, the reason why I hesitate to say that, that sounds like a really logical explanation, but I hesitate to say that because the con uh, within the surrounding verse, it says, He setteth an end uh, to darkness and searcheth out all perfection, the stones of darkness and the what? Shadow of death. So what disturbs me is in verse 3, the two points over here. So the two points over here, is searches out the end of darkness and then he puts out shadow of death. Now, this sounds like more like something spiritual it feels like to me. So it feels like that there's something spiritual. If you read throughout your Bible concerning darkness, there's always something negative about it. So it can be a natural working. Sometimes you'll notice that. It can be a natural working, something scientific of this world. But if you look at the Bible, there's a more strong tendency towards something spiritual. That's what you're going to find out concerning darkness. So it could be something spiritual over here. Now, you can argue this way concerning end of darkness. What you could be doing is that because it's talking about searching, perfect, uh, searching out all perfection, and then it's talking about those minerals at verses uh, 1 through 2. What it could be referring to is that it can reach that end, so to speak, of that dark element, and then you can find the rich element in there. However, the problem is it says shadow of death. And when I look up shadow of death in the Bible, 
That's something spiritual. So this one is very troubling to me. So shadow of death, what you're going to find out in the Bible, your pastor uh, already taught you that as Psalms chapter 23 and the book of, was it Amos? And it showed you that the shadow of death is not referring to something like a metaphorical phrase, meaning that um, I've reached the point in my life where I'm about to die, and that's metaphorically used as shadow of death. Sometimes it can refer to that, but if you look at Amos, if, I, if I'm wrong, shadow of death is actually a, a literal element over here. So it's some kind of spiritual literal element that the Antichrist will use to kill the people, actually. So that's something that I taught you at Revelation verse by verse. I'm not going to really expound it over here. So um, you'll also notice that uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, the Antichrist, makes a covenant with the, the nation of Israel, and it says it made a covenant with death, the overflowing scourge, which is very, very interesting. All right, aside from that fact, so this could be some kind of literal a stone of darkness, here we are. This could refer to some kind of literal spiritual element, so to speak. This could be then, possibly, let's, uh, we see right here at the book of Job, where at verse 3 it talks about stones of darkness, right? But then you'll notice right here that at verse 5, as for the earth out of it cometh bread, and under it, see, the ground, the stones, right? It is turned up as it were what? Fire, stones of fire. And then you'll see the stones of it are the place of what? Sapphires, and it hath what? Dust of gold. All right, you want something interesting? You want a really neat gold mine? All right, it kind of relates to our intermediate discipleship. Now, this is not gold, but bear with me. Remember the Garden of Eden? Mm -hmm. We mentioned about that it could be composed of gold over here. Now, remember I kind of compared that with the pre-Adamic world where... Lucifer lived in Eden, and during that time, he was decked with all that gold and all those minerals at Eden. Mm, look at Ezekiel. Look at Ezekiel 28. Look at Ezekiel. We're going to look at Ezekiel 28. Some of you are already guessing what it is. Being a Bible believer, you already can predict the answer. See that? Mm -hmm. That's the blessing of being a Bible believer, amen? Yeah, you can already guess. All right, look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Now look what the Bible says over here when Lucifer, in his, before he fell, before he fell, what did Lucifer do? Uh, look at verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Uh, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the ox, uh, Onyx and the jasper, the what? That matches with uh, Job 28, verse 6. All right, keep reading. The emerald and the carbuncle and gold. Look back at, uh, uh, if you look at Job 28, verse 6, dust of gold. Stones of it are place of sapphires and dust of gold. Wow, this can match up with Ezekiel 28, 13. See that? So this is the place that they're referring to. Lucifer, verse 14, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. See, that's undoubtedly Satan. Look at ver the latter part of verse 4. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the what? Stones of fire. Wow, how about that? How about that? So notice right here that this could be referring, all right, you want to hear the gold mine? Here's the gold mine. So the gold mine is this, is that here is Lucifer in his perfected state, and then in his perfected state, he was uh, walking up and down in the stones of fire. I know he looks like a penguin, but bear with me, all right? So, all right, let's cover the feet so that you don't see him as a penguin. Okay, anyway, stones of fire and gold, and this was in Eden. But then what happened is that he fell, right? So in his fallen state, you get the first mention where God sent out the what? Darkness at Genesis chapter 1. And then because of the darkness, what happens over here is that the Lord, he spreads around that darkness and the flood, right? That drowns us all out. Is there a flood mentioned? Yes. If you look at verse 4, the flood breaketh out uh, from the inhabitant. See that? So notice verse 3 talks about the darkness. Verse 4 talks about the flood.
which matches with Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, that God sent darkness and waters, the flood, to drown out this world that Lucifer walked on. And if you compare that uh, with the book of uh, Jude or 2 Peter, it talks about uh, the darkness that was spread about that God, when God drowned out these fallen angels, and it comes from hell. When was hell created? It was created for the devil and his angels when they rebelled. So see, that's where that darkness came from. And then the waters, where did it come from? 2 Peter chapter 3, where God drowned out the whole universe. So that's obviously not Noah's flood. That's got to refer to Lucifer's flood. And not only that, uh, just a quick word that you already learned this from your previous discipleship. If darkness comes out of hell, then think about this, where creationist has argued that Noah's flood, the waters could come from below the earth. And that's why there are volcanic eruptions. Think about this. Volcanic eruptions, they come from where? The Earth's core, which is what? Hell. So it is possible that during Lucifer's timeline, that when God was forming hell, the ground under Lucifer was breaking up, became stones of darkness, because hell was producing that darkness as well. And then thus, it just drowned out all, all the universe. All right, there's your answer. Let's close with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teachings were a blessing to the hearers. Dismiss us now with your blessing. I pray that we have grown so much more in knowledge of the scriptures, and may we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everybody.